is it going boys and girls welcome back to QS Waterman my name is Aaron Young so many sounds I love it I've been sitting out here for like 30 minutes listening to the birds um, it is day three here in Belize and something I've learned and I love is the sun rises really early it's just before 6 a.m. and it's already pretty bright out if it wasn't overcast you'd be able to see the sun already um, but Forgot what I was talking about. It's day three. Um, yesterday we didn't we didn't get it we didn't get out and do any spear fishing. Um, had a little bit of weather. We did run out in the afternoon and got to this beautiful sandbar. They took us out for the evening. We had some drinks and holy moly, went out and had a couple drinks and just kind of enjoyed the scenery, watched the sun go down. Um, but the gentleman that's hosting us, Will Mitchell, um, he said the weather's going to be decent today, so he's going to run us up somewhere pretty cool, uh, and hopefully we can get in the water. Do a little bit more spear fishing, um, but yeah, 6 a.m. I think we're meeting him over there in about an hour, about seven or so. Um, get the spear fishing gear together. That's a new bird, and we'll see you over there. All righty, we are headed out. We've got Will again, Will and Chris, and this is Robert gonna do some camera work on Will's channel like I talked about. Um, Will does have a YouTube channel down here, Everything Belize. Be sure to go over there and check it out. And if you kind of want to see his perspective from today, go over to his YouTube channel, Will, Will, Will Mitchell, excuse me. Um, I'll put a link for that and um, where are we headed today? All right, well we had planned to go north, but the weather doesn't look ideal and we got to put Aaron on the best locations here <laughs> in Showcase Belize. So we're gonna head south now. We're gonna go to the next island down to Cocker. Okay. And we're gonna hit some spots on the reef. And we'll probably go to the leeward side of the island and it's you know a shallower depth but you get different species yeah. over there so it should be a nice diverse uh, group of areas and get some nice fish. Alrighty, I am looking forward to it either way. I'm in Belize. How pissed off could I be? <laughs> we'll see you out there. Welcome back underwater everybody. So this is the first spot of the day. Will um, Mitchell actually had a spot he wanted to check. Said it was just a cave in the middle of nowhere. Um, not something you hear or see every day. So I was pretty anxious to get in the water and check this out. And I've never seen anything like this. Um, there was no rushing water out of it or water rushing in. It was just kind of looked like a giant took a hatchet and made a crack in the the seafloor it was really cool tons of life so this is my first drop on it don't have a ton of stuff like this in Key West in the shallows you can see just all all kinds of life on it It was a little creepy, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, this is wild. It's like a crack in the earth. So I worked my way down it. It was, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 feet long. Worked my way down it and I had got to the very far end. I'm not exactly how sure how far it goes back. Um, it's a little intimidating to swim back in there. Look like some kind of monster could be in there. And I'm panning up this little wall and nice Kubera sitting there. I talk about this in Key West. I see a bunch, but I save them for clients. I, I don't get to shoot that many, so I let it rip. My main concern is I don't want this thing to go any farther back in there and get wrapped up, so I immediately try and get a hold of my line just to stop it from furthering itself in the cave. Yeah, if I'm 
wrapped up in there. So it's best to have, in this situation, best to have a buddy hang on to the reel on the spear gun just so that fish can't keep swimming back in there and make it make more of a mess in a more difficult situation. Just trying to get an idea of where this line's going and obviously it made a little bit of commotion so it's going to stir it up, but luckily able to pull this thing free. And we are five minutes into day two. Nice Kubera snapper, what a cool spot. Wild cave. That's crazy, no? It's it's very spooky. <laughs> like the per like the perfect eater size. Oh yeah. That cave is unbelievable. It it literally looks like something out of a Stephen King movie. There's like lag tights or whichever one hangs down it's kind of creepy looking so that is the first spot that, that cave was just it's kind of eerie to be honest but just a beautiful kubera snap right back home i save these a lot of these for the clients but today i'm kind of a client so <laughs> shot one <laughs> but what i want to what I wanna, what I wanna point out is look how close to shore we are In that giant cave it's just that, is a that was unbelievable. That was that was super cool to experience. Beautiful fish. Good start. That's an easy one to remember, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this water. Okay. It's just unbelievable. I think one of the craziest things, and Will was just telling me this is, so you can see the beach right here. This is the reef where the waves are breaking right behind me. And right behind that, he said about 100 yards behind that, it drops down to about 2,000 feet. And in Key West, that's, we have to run 25 miles, at least minimum 25 miles for that. And this is just right here is a thousand, over 1,000 feet of water. Unbelievable. We headed out to the reef. Water's a little cleaner. First thing, when we get up to the rocks, a school of small yellow jacks came in. I, I really was craving a yellow jack, but I just couldn't bring myself to shoot it. It was pretty small, and there was a few of them. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And some of you are probably wondering, uh, why we spent so much time in the shallows. There are a lot of deeper spots and there's some atolls off of Belize that they dive and see a lot more bigger fish. They said we just didn't have the ideal weather to get out there. So um, we spent a lot of time in the shallows, but realistically, I, I'm not out to shoot trophy fish anymore. The older I get, the more I'm just about the experience. Um, and I'm sure we'll be back. So next time, if we get some good weather, we'll get out to some of those deeper areas and hopefully hit some of those atolls. But again, the reefs were just unbelievable. We're in eight feet of water. Got the Blue Tang Clan here. 
cruising back and forth with the waves. So I had been swimming around for about 30 minutes. You used to just see me unload one band there. I had seen this schoolmaster pop in and out of this cave a couple times. So I figured it was probably time to start shooting fish. I had just been swimming around enjoying everything. Schoolmasters are almost like dog snappers. They like caves. Um, they'll pop in and out of them. They are curious. So I was just kind of anticipating... I was going to come around this corner and wait to see if he was going to come out of this cave. And I unloaded one band. I'm trying not to shoot into rocks hard. This coral's just beautiful. I want to do minimal damage if I can help it. And one band. Normally the fish uh, will slow the shaft down so much that you're not shooting into stuff with just one band. And he didn't come out. Didn't do his little head poke. So I go in a little further and he does it. You can see right when I poke my head and he's there and I kind of have a meat shot here so I want to wait. I wait till he turns around. Boop! And pokes his head back out and try to put it right in the gill plate there. And right now I'm pushing that shaft forward because the fish is up against a rock. I want to make sure the flopper had gone through. And uh, luckily it did. And this was a really nice schoolmaster. We don't get a ton of these in Key West. The dog snappers are really orange. Um, you'll see this schoolmaster when I turn them sideways. They'll have these almost vertical white stripes sometimes. Some of them have them, some of them don't. It's almost like how a mangrove has a black stripe across the eye. The schoolmasters will have these vertical stripes. And the mo most distinguishing part of them to me is the, the yellow on the fins. All of the fins are a really... Nice bright yellow color, just a, a beautiful fish. This is pretty neat, it's a, just a solo permit following an eagle ray. I was hoping for a yellow jack. I uh, really didn't expect one to swim up on me this fast, and I still had my schoolmaster on my shaft, and I didn't want to lose the opportunity here. And he just came in nice and mellow, and luckily that patience on that little one paid off, and they sent me a gift. And this one was just a perfect eater size. Came right in, super mellow, all by itself. And apparently the locals don't um, target these very often, which was kind of surprising to me. Something I did learn is they do love barracudas. They eat barracudas. It's all they talked about. I um, was looking for barracudas, but not so much the yellow jack. It's funny just how different areas focus on different fish. And it's funny. I didn't see a whole lot of mangroves this trip. I saw a few here and there. And after I shot this yellow jack, it's kind of hard to see, but a big school of mangroves came in to check out the commotion. Again, action brings action. We don't see a ton of big ones in Key West. That's a nice one for our standards. And I was secretly hoping to see one of these. Saw some smaller ones when I first got in, and had this nice one came right up to me. And gave me a good shot. 
I was secretly hoping for some sashimi while we were here. That's gonna be it. It's a gorgeous spot. I mean, we're in eight feet of water and the corals are just unbelievable. Stuff you see on Net Geo. Just swim around for hours. I felt I had taken enough fish from this spot, so I decided to hop back in without the gun and kind of just enjoy the reefs here. I've said it 30 times, the reefs here are unbelievable. It's truly a magical place. One of the individuals that was responsible for putting us on the fish and really helping make this trip great was uh, this gentleman right here, Chris. Um, super nice guy. He does run charters in Belize on San Pedro. So if you ever find yourself over there, be sure to look him up. Does exactly what I do. Makes his uh, living on the water. Um, he just does it in Belize. He does everything from snorkeling, fishing, spear fishing. He'll even take you to the beach and uh, cook up your catch for the afternoon. But uh, be sure to look him up if you ever find yourself over there. All right, so it's, it's only about 11.30 and I've already got quite a few fish in the boat. And out of curiosity, I asked these guys if we could go out on the outside of the reef and take a look at the deeper water. So I think that's what we're gonna go do. Let's see what this, this uh, roll off looks like. Very curious. So something I find interesting here is there's not really any channel markers. Like the reef just continues to go down and there's just sections uh, where it gets a little deeper where they can run the boats through and if you're not careful you'll run into that stuff over there where it's white water and you'll run the lower unit into the ground you just kind of got to know where you're going local knowledge Hold on. It looks like this is the deepest right here. You're in the shallowest we've been so far. <laughs> it's a little different than back home running through the channel. That was the most exciting part of the day. <laughs> huh? Yeah. So all I really wanted to do out in the deep water was just kind of look at the bottom structure. Just being in a new place, I wanted to see what it looked like, see if it looked any different than Key West. Um, this is the face of that roll off. If we'd have went another couple hundred yards out, he said that it would have dropped off into the abyss to thousands of feet of water. But um, just wanted to stretch my lungs a little bit and uh, see something new. So this is my first drop. Bottom was, I think it was around 50 feet. Just wanted to get down in there and check it out. It looked pretty similar to a lot of spots in Key West. There's some kind of what I call crunchy bottom. Little heads and corals here and there. Mm -hmm. Nice big yellowtail snapper. Weird to see one by itself, but... Mm -hmm.
So I did a couple drops, didn't see a whole lot. Not unusual. There's not fish everywhere all the time. And uh, it was just kind of funny timing. I was poking around in this hole, seeing if by chance I could find a grouper or something. And a lot of times this will happen. Groupers or snappers or even yellow jacks will come while you're doing something else. They'll come check you out. And I'm on my way up and somehow didn't see this. Started to make a little bit of commotion and realized a nice mutton snapper had come in to look at me. Will was coming down to film me and you can see this mutton snapper kind of taking off on its way out and Will threw a shot at it and just barely hit it a little high and it didn't stick. And I just tried to keep my eyes on it. You could see it darted back into that hole. He's in that hole. He went in the hole. Yeah. And one mistake I see a lot of people make when this situation arises is they see a fish swim into the hole and then they'll pull their head out of the water and talk about it for a while. You need to continue to watch that hole just in case that fish does decide to dart or come out. Um, I see way too many people do that and then they lose track of the fish and you don't know where it went. So Will was having a tough day. Like I said, he made a YouTube video on this day if you want to go watch it. He had some shark problems and some other stuff. He just just having one of those days. Sometimes it happens. We all have them. And um, he wanted to give this mutton another go because he had hit it. It just didn't, the shot just didn't stick. But he did a couple drops and did some loops around the coral head. And the, the, it was funny. It's like every time he dropped, the snapper would poke its head out on the other side and it just kept shifting and it just, it wasn't lining up. So he finally was over it and asked if I would go down and take a look. So because I know this fish is in here, I want to, I'm right-handed, so my, my gun needs to be on the outside. So I'm going to circle this rock counterclockwise. If I do it the opposite way, my gun's going to be on my inside, and it's going to be kind of uncomfortable and at a weird angle, if that makes sense. So it just gives you a little more room um, to work. Now, if, if you're left-handed, you'd want to circle this rock clockwise. And I come around this corner, and I can see the mutton's head just poking out, so I get ready, come around the corner, shine him, and... I don't hesitate. Um, because this fish has been hit, I have a feeling it's going to dart. So Des didn't hesitate on the shot. The second I pulled the trigger, it turned. And unfortunately, it um, ran the shaft down the flay a little bit, but no big deal. Still very edible. I just, you know how particular I am about meat shots, but it just unfortunately happened that way. But what an amazing trip. I uh, truly can't thank everyone enough that was involved. We will definitely be back, and I'm, I'm sure next time we'll uh, get out to the atolls. There are these little group of islands. I think they're 20 or 30 miles off the coast of Belize. Um, apparently, that's where a lot of the a lot of the spear fishing goes on. Not that we needed any more fish than we had. We did great inshore. I couldn't believe it. Definitely looking forward to getting back. Here's a little trick to getting your shaft out on an odd shot. Put that flopper down and twist as you pull. Okay. Very rare. Beautiful, look how orange they are. Yeah. It's like a lot more orange than pink. Ours are really pink, it's like really orange. Beautiful. Well, we are done out here. We got plenty of fish to eat. We got a little extra to send the boys home. Robert and Chris have been helping out. Send them home with some fresh fish, which is always nice. Leave some with the locals. Um, I'm probably gonna do something with that yellow jack later. I'm not sure, but it's only it's only noon. I don't have my watch on. I think it's around noon, one o'clock. So we're gonna head into the beach. You know this guy cooking with clams. He's gonna cook something up on the beach, and we're gonna enjoy our afternoon. I'll see you in a bit. some chats about what to do with this yellow jack and being in Belize the first thing you probably don't think of is sushi but you guys know how much I love sushi and how intimidating it is to me I love recreating dishes at home and this is one of the things I cannot figure out for some reason mine always sucks at home when you go out to eat it's great and it turns out Will has a really good friend 
named Kyoshi, and he has a sushi bar here in Belize, several. Um, we're at Giota on Mahogany Bay in San Pedro, um, and Will was kind enough to get a hold of Kyoshi for us, and he said that he would be willing to cook us some Yellow Jack, and again, this is more for me than it is for you guys, because I'm gonna ask him a million questions, but I did want to maybe show you guys some behind the scenes stuff. Um, we've also got other Will here. He's already doing something. Um, but I, this just blows my mind. Making sushi is such an art. I, I want to get behind the scenes with a real deal sushi chef. He's been in Belize for five years, six years. He's been all over the world making sushi. He is from Japan. Um, I'm a little starstruck. I'm probably blushing, but uh, I'm excited to see what happens here. Catch fresh yesterday, no? Last yes. Night. Yep, and we chilled it all last night. Pop it inside and then. So do you like, when you get fish fresh, do you like it to rest for a certain amount of time before you serve it or is there... It is. We do like a kind of aging. Okay. So at the usual fish, uh, this size, two days, one and a half to two days. Okay. Have it for the, okay. the aging thing. Mm. And then uh, it actually depends on the uh, fish. Jack is a little, like a, we enjoy a little texture. So yeah. How it's harder to than the snapper. Yeah. So I prefer like a day overnight and two days. Okay. The that is interesting because that's that's how we feel at home. We we like it to at least rest overnight if we can for maybe a day or two. I know. Right? It depends know, on the fish it's, though. It's gonna have to say like people say, oh, it's fresh. It's a fresh, but it's just fresh as just catch. <laughs> yeah. That, that that's not good. Yeah. Chewy, I mean, right? Too chewy, and then that flavor's coming up here. Same as beef. Okay. We need the aging, uh, and then because after like uh, it's fish then too hot, too hot. Yeah. And then like. Uh, Slowly, we need to uh, control temperatures, cleaning up bugs and no bacteria things and the parasites off. And then, so you need to resting in a, uh, like a little cold the fridge temperatures. I do like uh, three, one day, two days, three days, four days, different flavors. Coming yeah, that's so, cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like that's that. Like how so I find that very about. interesting. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. He's, saying, he's, he's agreeing with some things that I have found in my time and that makes me feel kind of good. Mainly about the fish resting. One of the big things about my channel is I like to try and teach people things and I like to learn myself. That's one of the main reasons I do this. Um, and sushi is very intimidating to make at home. Um, uh, so other than the, obviously the freshness of the fish and, uh, and that, what would you say is the most important part of the sushi? Uh, fish rice. Maybe the rice? Yeah, almost other people like... Uh, I always mess the rice up. It is, it is. That, that's how... Once like you're like getting like a how to steam make your rice, fish rice quickly. Do you add a lot of stuff to it? Like any rice, ginger, sugar, or anything like that? Oh, uh, so first we make the sushi vinegar. Sushi okay. vinegar is like... Uh, Rice vinegar, sugar, salt, and then uh, we using the uh, uh, sea uh, kelp, yeah. the, the songbook. Okay. Right. Uh, well, it's depends on like uh, a sushi restaurant. Uh, in Japan, people using like a fish, like uh, uh, some place using fish, blow, uh, you know, kind of dried fish flake. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, we actually have some fish. Yeah. That, that one, or like a uh, uh, dried mushroom. Okay. So, well, I think the flavor. Oh, okay. We making the uh, vegan, uh, vegan like uh, sushi vinegar because we have a uh, sort of vegan people coming up here. Uh, okay, cool. And uh, not mushroom also some people have, have allergic to mushroom too. Yeah. It's like we uh, doing only seaweed and then uh, sugar, salt, rice vinegar. That's a pretty okay. simple one. Killer. I already learned enough. I asked them how to make the rice. Uh, <laughs> I, would, I always mess up the rice every time. The rice is off. Actually, this is a simple part, but you need to. But once you get it, yeah. I understand exactly. It's easy once you know how, but to get it right is difficult. It's like a 14 year old girl at a Justin Bieber concert. So excited. Just never know. So this one is a, the famous Mitchell roll making now. Oh, the Mitchell roll. The Mitchell roll is actually... This is, this is Will's signature roll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mitchell roll is like a world famous Mitchell roll. But we're sub substituting Yellow Jack or this time. Or like the YouTuber coming up here and they say, wow, this is the best roll. This is how Mitchell roll. <laughs> the Mitchell roll.
Man, I gotta get a roll. I gotta get a roll back in Key West. I'm gonna have to make some phone calls. I'm so excited. I feel like I feel, I feel like I'm in a candy store. Sushi just like blows my mind. It's just so intimidating and impress. It's an art. It's so impressive to me. It's served vertically. <laughs> so this is a uh, how it's very simple, but it's like avocados and then a uh, local queen snappers and then black truffle. So this is how like uh, you know like the local and then bougie things. This is a local this is, little bougie. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, that local meets bougie. Local meets bougie. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Such a nice white mild fish. It made me so happy to hear him talk about fish resting. restaurants kind of blows my mind or anywhere in the Caribbean where they have them yeah he said they use them from time to time but it's I don't think it's a, a main target but don't sleep on yellow jack for sushi right across the street. Apparently he's a frequent flyer. Yeah, as you can imagine. Delivering all over the Yeah, they been everywhere. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I think just just my view of this. The only Yankee we have. Beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, keep it. It's a beautiful, beautiful cup. I play it. Oh, it's a nice. 
Womp womp. It's our last morning here in Belize. Kind of just the the perfect final day to wrap it all up. The weather actually kind of turned, so we weren't able to get on the boat anyways. Um, and I just realized I was pronouncing Toshi's name wrong the entire time. I was so nervous. I do apologize, Toshi. Um, I'm going to put all his restaurant info um, in the description as well. If you're ever in the area, highly recommend it. Just a genuinely amazing human being. We had a, a great time. So many laughs. Um, we also, uh, last evening, went to one of the local uh, Garifuna restaurants, which is one of the cultures here, called Black and White. Got some real Garifuna food. It was just, it was the icing on the cake. We had such an amazing time. Um, and I cannot thank Will Mitchell enough uh, the gentleman who had us down and showed us around just really bent over backwards uh, to show us a great time. Just an amazing, genuine human being. I, I can't explain how grateful I am. It was, it's a, a trip that I'll never forget. Again, he has a YouTube channel. He's kind of a guy just like me, trying to make it in the world, trying to build a life that he enjoys, except he's doing it in Belize. So I'll attach his YouTube. It's Will Mitchell. Um, be sure to go over there and check it out. Like I said, everything from real estate to local cuisine. They do a lot of challenges and they have a lot of fun. Uh, just a fun group of guys trying to live life. Um, I think that's all I have. Looking forward to getting back to Key West and seeing Madeline. She was actually supposed to be on this trip and um, I made a huge mistake uh, with dates and we ended up having to reschedule and she was not able to make the rescheduled dates. Um, but I'm confident we'll be back and I'll bring her next time. Sorry, babe. Love you. But that is all I have. Uh, we're kind of getting packed up here. Headed to the airport shortly and we'll get back to Key West in the regularly scheduled programming. If you have any questions, uh, feel, please feel free. As always, leave them in the comments. I'm happy to get to them. Um, yeah, thank you everyone who was a part of this trip. Too many people. Feeling awfully grateful this morning. Um, but enough talking. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.